Okay, let's get started. So thank you everybody for joining us on today's Tech Talk. We will be covering best practices for customizing your optimization model. So I'm Rainuka, and I have the pleasure of hosting Nicole, our VP of Engineering today. She will be walking through the anatomy of an optimization problem, We'll dive right into best practices for customizing your value function, as well as creating custom constraints. And then she will go ahead and deploy uh, the app that we create live, and then also do some experimentation on Next Move Cloud. And we will do that all in under 30 minutes. So we're glad you are here to enjoy this with us. Um, we will save some time at the end for questions. So please drop yours into the chat or into the Q&A feature. And we have uh, a few other next movers on the call with us. So drop in your questions, hop in to say hello. And uh, with that, I will let Nicole introduce herself and we will jump into today's content. Thanks, Reynu. Uh, yeah, so I come at things from kind of an unconventional background. Um, I studied statistics, not uh, programming. And uh, I was primarily an R user before coming to next move. And um, when I first came to Next Move, I was doing a lot of customer work and helping them evaluate their model performance on Next Move models. And then I sort of moved into um, more of the, the Go side and actually building out their models in Go for them and becoming sort of this expert user of our stuff. And then um, moved on from there to contributing to the code base directly. And, um, and that's how I sort of landed in this role um, in sort of a, a a unconventional way. Um, so hopefully I can share some of my experiences from working closely with customers in my time at Nextmove and, um, and you'll find it useful. So with that, I will start by talking about what the components are of an optimization problem. Um, here at Nextmove, we talk about three components, uh, the optimization goal, the entities, and the constraints. What do I mean when I say optimization goal? Uh, these are the the things we're trying to solve for. So um, what are you trying to optimize? Are you trying to minimize total distance traveled, total duration? Do you want to um, minimize ETA error? Uh, those are what we mean when we say optimization goals. On the entity side, um, what we mean when we say entities are actors or um, variables that are at play in, in the problem. So on the routing side, those are things like stops, and vehicles. Um, on the scheduling side, you can think about that as like shifts and, and um, workers that you're trying to assign to shifts. And lastly, on the constraint side, um, this is really the core business logic that needs to be followed or adhered to in your optimization model. Things like drivers can't work more than eight hours, or they need to have a break every four, um, or they can't have more than 10 stops on a route. Uh, these are all constraints. And so what does next move provide out of the box here? I'm going to focus on the routing use case because that's kind of the theme of, of this presentation is customizing on top of routing. Um, so what do we provide out of the box in terms of uh, configuration in our routing engine? Uh, we provide for optimization goals, you can configure your routing engine to minimize distance or minimize time on road. On the entity side, you can configure um, stops, pedestrians, bikes, cars, and trucks. Um, and on the constraint side, <clears throat> um, you, we support uh, tons of constraints and cover you know, most, um, most business needs here. Things like time windows, capacity, uh, delivery precedents, duration and distance limits, um, compatibility attributes, backlogs, and, and much more. So when should you reach for these configurable options that I just went through? Um, there are a few, of course, many scenarios, but I'm going to talk about a, a few here. Um, for example, modifying shift times to account for labor laws or driver availability, um, limiting max route time or route length, um, to avoid long haul routes, diversifying your fleet with different types of vehicles. So we can see this if someone wants to explore minimizing emissions and swapping out cars for bikes and seeing what that does. Um, you can also account for the cost of using specific vehicles. We call this initialization cost. So for example, bikes maybe being cheaper than cars, um, you can represent that. And um, 
Also, uh, you can account for traffic with time dependent measures, which is which is another configurable option out of the box with next move. This is just a handful of the, the many scenarios that we support. Um, and now <clears throat> when when is it best to customize my model? And that's sort of when configuration doesn't get you uh, as far as you need to go. And then you need to reach into a more advanced customization. Uh, some examples of this would be creating specific output formats for front end applications, um, balancing your fleet utilization, for example, um, creating accurate ETAs and honoring those ETAs, um, minimizing costs or maximizing profit. And of course, within this, there's a million different uh, ways that you can do that. Um, accounting for an item's total time on the vehicle. Uh, for example, if you're picking up a passenger, you don't want them to be in, in the car for five hours. You want to make sure that when you pick them up, you drop them off right away afterwards. Um, and uh, not mixing item types on the same vehicle. So these are some examples of when you might want to reach into a, a more advanced form of customization, which is what we're going to talk about today. So uh, where does model customization happen at Nextmove? Um, it, it happens in three places, uh, in the input and output, in the value function, and in your constraints. So um, on the input and output side, this is essentially just schema. Um, if you want to have a custom input or custom output that allows you to more easily integrate with your upstream or downstream services. Uh, and also, uh, sometimes this kind of customization is really useful for providing observability into what your model is doing. For example, if you, if you write a custom constraint or a custom value function, maybe you want to add some KPIs to your output to make sure that that functionality that you just added is doing what you think it is. Um, on the value function side, this is the main goal that you're optimizing for, and this isn't likely to suddenly change. Um, this is something that's probably more incremental and you're sort of building on top of, of your existing value. Um, and lastly, on the constraint side, these are the business rules or the logic that the model needs to follow. This is more likely to happen as sort of additions to the model. Um, typically, what we see in the routing space is there's this collaboration between um, ops and the model developers and ops says, hey, you know, we're seeing this in the field. Can you add this constraint um, so that um, the, the routes are, are better for drivers or for users, for example? And so now, uh, quickly touching on customizing input and output, I wanted to show a really a simple example of how you can customize your output structure with our routing engine. Um, so you can use our uh, our format option in our routing engine and pass in a function. And so on the left, I've created this function in in, um, in my code, which says I'm going to take in the plan, which is sort sort of the current the the, the default format of of your route um, plan. And I'm going to modify how I present that output. And so what I did here is I created a map and then I passed in the, the default data that comes on that route plan, which is the, the vehicles and the unassigned stops. And then I added two new fields that weren't in that output already. Um, the num vehicles, which is just a length of the, the vehicles in the plan and the num unassigned, which is just a length of the, of the unassigned stops. This is just to show that you could put whatever you want in that output, um, and it's, it's very useful, especially for observability into the model. Uh, so now let's talk about customizing the value function. My first piece of advice here is to keep it simple to start. Don't throw every KPI into your value function at once and then try to see what's going on <laughs> in your solution. Um, I recommend starting with one thing that you're trying to achieve. So typically that's, you know, you, you know, you want to minimize route duration or route distance, um, in addition to other things, and then just modify that value function incrementally, adding your terms and running experiments to see what the impact is on your solution. And uh, second piece of advice is using consistent units in your value function. Um, so in a value function, you have when you're customizing, you typically will have, you know, multiple terms in there. Um, it, best practice is to have those terms be in the same units. 
So you can do that in, in one of two ways. Um, first, maybe you wanna just translate all of those terms to the same unit. Like maybe you, you can translate everything to dollars and you should do that. Uh, if, if you don't know the dollar translation to, of each of your terms in the value function, maybe you wanna just normalize those terms in some way. Um, and so an example of this is, let's say you want to um, account for total duration and seconds of your route, and you also want to account for the number of vehicles you're using. Um, if, if you're just using number of vehicles directly and comparing that to a duration in seconds, that vehicles term is going to be dwarfed by, by the, the term representing time in seconds. So maybe you want to just translate each of those things to dollars, or maybe you just want to normalize them and pick your penalties on each. Uh, and then the, the third piece of advice here, once you've identified consistent units with one of those two methods, then um, it's time to identify the penalties that you should apply to those different terms in your value function. And um, so uh, another example here is, um, let's say you want really efficient routes, you want to minimize travel duration, but you also want them to look really compact and clustered on a map. Um, you can put some constraint, uh, some um, term in your value function that represents clustering, and you can balance that with the, the time on road, and you probably don't know how to translate those things to dollars. So maybe you just want to normalize those terms. And then maybe you want to start by picking some penalties, running an experiment, seeing what those routes look like on a map, and then modifying your penalties and running different experiments to see what the impact is of that. Um, so now let's go into custom constraints. So best practices here um, if it doesn't feel natural with our out-of-the-box constraints, then it's definitely time to think about customization. Um, we, we recommend not trying to bend our existing configurable constraints to do something they're not built for. And so one example here is if you really want to limit passenger time on a vehicle, that was the example I gave before, where you, you want to pick someone up and you don't want them to be on a vehicle for five hours before they're dropped off, um, don't try to use our route limit constraint. Um, that's not going to do what you want it to do. And instead, you should think about writing a custom constraint to do that. Uh, and last piece of advice here is when you build out a custom constraint and add it to your model, you want to probably add something custom to your output to confirm that the constraint is working the way that you expect it to so that you're not sort of accumulating um, errors in your code um, when you're not checking them incrementally. Okay, so um, with that, I think let's jump into creating a model. And um, what is our model gonna look like today for this example? Uh, well, what we wanna do here is we want to write a model that um, meets ETAs using target times in addition to minimizing time on the road. Our input data has vehicles and stops with pickups and drop-offs. And our constraints are capacity, vehicle shifts. And then we also want to build a custom constraint that represents a last in, first out, or um, sometimes I'll call this the ice cream constraint, where you want to pick up ice cream and you don't want it to be in the car for five hours before you drop it off. So we want to time the, the pickup and the drop off in our route such that the drop off immediately follows the pickup for that particular stop that's labeled as last in, first out, or, or LIFO. So in summary, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a default routing model, and we're going to add a custom value function that accounts for ETA error, and we're going to add a custom constraint that represents last in, first out. So now it's time to customize, deploy, and experiment. And as we're doing this, the experiment question to keep in mind is, how does this new customized model affect our KPIs? Did we reduce our ETA error like we thought we would? And did we honor that last in first out constraint that we built? So now I'm going to hop over to VS Code. All right, so I'm gonna start with the input. Um, what we have here are uh, vehicles, and velocities for our vehicles. We have 
an array of stops that we want to assign to those vehicles. Uh, vehicles have starts and ends. Um, they have shifts and uh, several other items. The main thing I wanted to go through is these last four arrays here. Um, this is new data that I've added to our existing um, routing model that I initialized with our CLI. And this is because I need this data to be able to do the customization that we talked about doing today. Um, so I started by adding an array called labels, which um, labels this particular stop ID of West as a last in first out pickup stop. And so we want to make sure that this particular stop has a drop off that immediately follows its pickup. And then I've also added um, earliness penalties and lateness penalties and target times. And so what this all means is each stop has a target time that we're trying to achieve. And for every second late or early that we are in the route, we incur a penalty. So we're trying to essentially just get as close as we can to that target time in our routes. So I'm uh, going to go through two different diffs to illustrate how we do this customization. I'm going to start with a diff that shows you how we modify our default routing engine, uh, routing model to account for the, uh, the custom value function that represents ETA error in addition to um, total distance, total time traveled. And so um, what we're seeing here is the first step is to modify the input struct to actually pull in those additional fields that I showed you that I added in the input JSON. So we're adding you know, the earliness penalties, the lateness penalties, and target times in here. And then I'm going to actually bounce to the bottom where I define some structures that we use. So um, there's two structures here that we define and two methods, one for each of those structures. So first, we define this vehicle data structure. And a vehicle data structure has data that we need to update that vehicle's value in our solve. And that method on that vehicle data structure is called update. And this is what our, our routing engine expects uh, in order to be able to update the value of a particular vehicle or a particular route. And um, we also have another data structure called plan data. This is essentially the, the, the aggregation of all of the vehicles. And we have an update method to update the overall value of the plan. And so what's happening in here? Um, so for vehicle data, we're passing in the earliness penalties, lateness penalties, and target times. And then we're using those to um, update the value of the route. So we start with um, <clears throat> initializing earliness, lateness, and total route duration to zero. We get our um, estimated arrival and departure times for this particular um, route that we're trying to value as part of the solve. And then um, we're looping through the locations in that route and we're calculating the, um, the total duration of the route. And we're also calculating the uh, total earliness, which is the, the earliness penalty multiplied by the, the earliness seconds. And uh, we're also calculating the lateness score, which is the lateness penalty multiplied by lateness seconds. And then what we return here is uh, a value that's overriding the default vehicle value. And this new value is a, the sum of total duration, earliness, and lateness. And so then, so that's how we update the vehicle's uh, value. And then what we want to do is use those individual vehicles values to update the overall value of the plan or the solution. And we can do that here by passing in some data that we need um, in our update method. And then uh, essentially what we're doing is we're just looping through all of those vehicles and we are um, updating the plan value with the, um, the new sum of all the individual vehicles values. So that's what's happening in those update methods. And now all we have to do is tell our routing engine uh, what data to use and to, to do that. So that's what we're doing here is we're just instantiating the plan data and the vehicle data structs with the input data that we added to our input JSON. And then we're adding one line to our um, router instantiation, which says, 
use the update method to update the, the vehicle and the plan data according to those methods that we defined in our code. And so that is how you customize a value function to incorporate ETA error in addition to total route duration. And now I'm going to jump over to a, another diff, which shows how we can write a custom value function to honor the last in first out constraint. So um, what I'm doing here is I'm just adding that field to the input struct, which, um, which pulls in the, the LIFO labels that I showed you. And then we'll bounce back to the bottom where we define some structures that we're going to use. Um, so here we define similarly to how we define the vehicle data and plan data structures. Uh, we have a custom constraint structure and we can put whatever data we need for our custom constraint into that struct. And then the custom constraint structure has a violated method that our routing engine expects. And this violated method is something we can put whatever we want in here. All it has to do is obviously conform to the API as well as to return true if the constraint is violated and false if it's not. And so what we're doing here is we're, we're saying every time we insert a stop, we're gonna summon, well, the engine is gonna summon this method and it's gonna say, did this insertion violate this constraint? And um, what we do is we loop through all the locations in our route and we get the stop and we get a label for whether or not that's a, a last in first out stop. If it's not, then let's just continue because we don't care about that for this constraint. If it is a last in first out pickup stop, then let's get the corresponding drop off ID for that stop. And then we're going to check if the drop off ID is not immediately following the pickup ID for that last in first out stop. And if it's if the drop off doesn't come immediately after the pickup, then we return true because this constraint is in fact violated. Um, otherwise, we'll return false. And so now um, we just need to uh, basically tell the routing engine to use the this structure and and violated method. And so that's what we're doing here is we're just creating this custom constraint. We're passing it in the data that it needs, and then uh, we're adding the route dot constraint option to our um, router instantiation and we're giving it that structure that we created and we're telling it to apply that constraint to all vehicles here and um, so that is how you write a custom constraint to do last in first out and um, now what i will do is i will go ahead and um, deploy this so uh, let me just show you quickly uh, oops, type the name of the company correctly. Uh, so <laughs> uh, here we go. I'm showing you a list of the apps that I have created. And so I prepared this in advance um, for the purposes of this demo. And so I have this app called Grocery App. So that's what I want to deploy this to. Um, so I'm going to do a next move app push. And I'm going to say that the app ID is this grocery app that I've already created. And I am in the I'm in the folder of where my custom model lives that I just created. And so that's what's going to get pushed to this application. And now I have I have gone and deployed this to my dev instance. So what I will do now is switch over to console and we can see how to run an experiment. So let me share my console screen. All right, so what you're seeing here is my, uh, my console with my two apps that I have created. This is the app that I wanted to go through today. Um, I've already made some runs to this app. So you can see run history here. Um, you can see that those three runs succeeded. You can click on them and you can see, you know, a, a nice map view of, of what the result was. Um, and 
Uh, so what I did here is I created an input set for my experiment already using those three run IDs that I just showed. And this is the input set that I want to use to run my experiments where I compare my default routing model to the customized one. Um, and so we can run an experiment um, by creating a new experiment in console. You can put in a name, an ID, and a description. Um, you can select the input set that you want to run with, and you can select you know, your default uh, routing instance that you want to use for comparison to the dev instance. So I'm not going to run this experiment again. Um, in the interest of time, I'm just going to go through what I have already prepared. And um, so this is a, an experiment that I ran where I was comparing the default grocery app to my um, my customized um, model that we built together. And so I want to go through a few items here. So this is showing a comparison of value for the default compared to the, the customized on the right. You can see the value went up significantly, but this was expected because in the default instance, we were optimizing for distance. And in the customized one, we're optimizing for time and adding all those penalties for earliness and lateness. So this makes sense. And this isn't really uh, super useful except to say, oh, the value changed, right? So the things that we probably want to look at are down here. I went ahead and added some custom metrics to the output so that we could evaluate um, the, the differences between the two versions. And so what we're seeing here is um, on the earliness side, we are a little bit um, earlier, actually, in our customized model, which was maybe counterintuitive since we wanted to minimize ETA error. But then if we go into custom lateness, you can see that we significantly reduced lateness in our custom model. So we basically just uh, sacrificed a little bit on earliness in order to you know, significantly reduce lateness in that custom model. Um, so that is that aligns with what we would expect and uh, and things look good there that our value function is doing what we think it is. And then lastly, I want to just show um, I added a, a summary of number of uh, last and first out violations. And we can clearly see that, you know, we had them in our default model when we weren't including that constraint and we don't have them in our custom model now that we have that constraint. And so it looks like that constraint is working. Um, so that is what I wanted to show there with experiments. And now let me hop back over to the slides. Uh, so what did we learn today? Uh, for customizing a value function, uh, what we did is we added the data that we needed to our existing input struct. We created an update method for it, and we passed that data into the update method. On the custom constraint side, we did something similar where we created um, we added that data to the input struct that we needed for labels. We created a constraint option to pass in our constraint and the data that we needed for it. And then we created a violated method that gets summoned within the solver and returned true if the constraint was violated. And uh, what did we learn from this talk? Uh, hopefully you learned that NextMove offers a lot of configurable routing options out of the box. Um, and when those don't do everything that you need, then you can reach into customization and customize your model to meet your requirements. Um, we recommend starting simple and then iterating to add complexity. And um, we've shown that you can build and deploy a custom routing model in under 30 minutes and also experiment with different instances of your model as well. And that's all I have. All right, I think we hit 30 minutes on the dot for customizing, deploying, creating and looking at the results of an experiment uh, and sharing best practices. So yeah, I think we can squeeze in one question. Let me see what we have here. Okay, I have one for you, Nicole. Is there a way to share the KPIs or the results of an experiment with teammates who are working with me on a model? Yes, we have a Teams feature in console. And um, so what you can do there is you can add um, anyone from your team or your organization into your console team. And when they accept that invite, then they can 
they can then see basically all of your apps, all of your run history, and any experiments that you ran under that account. And so this is really nice. Um, you know, we were talking about the collab between ops and um, and model devs. It's really nice there because you can basically share um, results of experiments with uh, people outside of your team, and it's really useful for collaboration. Thank you. Okay, well, I think we will wrap it up. And I just wanted to share a few resources with folks. So head to nextmv.io and we have our documentation there, blog posts, and of course, more tech talks coming soon. Uh, Ryan, our CTO, will be presenting on collaboration and model ops. So more of what Nicole just mentioned in terms of teams and sharing apps and experiments. And if you enjoyed our sneak preview of experimentation, there is more to come with live presentation on the topic. So stay tuned and thank you so much for joining. We will see you next time.